Maybe let me start. So, uh, so first, I like to recall uh, the definition. So this definition, it's, uh, it's complicated. I like to say a little bit more to convince you that this is a reasonable definition. Um, and then I will explain the, the, the underlying geometries of it. Uh, and also, I will relate the, the theorem that we proved to some classical uh, theorems. And so let me just recall the, the discrete conformality uh, that we defined the last time. Uh, this definition, by the way, uh, so far this works fine, but uh, I had a hard time to generalize this to non-compact surfaces. So, uh, so the question is, uh, if, if, so this is a question one may think about. So uh, uh, if S uh, non-compact, uh, and in this case we have a triangulation involving infinite number of triangles. So what's uh, what's uh, the analog uh, should be? So uh, what is so what is a discrete conformal uh, uh, equivalence of PL matrix? Uh, the reason is that if you think about a uniform, the classical uniformization theorem, um, it works for all Riemann surfaces. But you only need to prove the classical uniformization theorem for simply connected Riemann surfaces. And that implies immediately all the rest. And, and, and so you, mainly we are dealing with uh, non-compact, simply connected Riemann surfaces. So you prove a uniformization. And that's, that implies everything. So, uh, so that's the, the sort of the background uh, question in my mind. And what should be, will there be some kind of a, a discrete version of a uh, polyhedral surfaces on non-compact simply connected surfaces. So, but let me just go back to this. So I have a, a, I have a closed, uh, it's a compact surface with no boundary, and V is a finite set of points. And I have two uh, uh, flat cone metric on the surface. These are the polyhedral surfaces. All the cone points of D and D prime are inside this V. Okay, but but uh, some point, some uh, some point here may be uh, a flat point of D. And so, and we say these two metrics are discrete conformal. If we can produce a sequence of uh, 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 polyhedral metrics uh, on the surface, on the same surface, uh, where the first one is your given D and the last one is your D prime, and also a sequence of uh, triangulations of of this. A surface with a point marked. So all the vertices of the triangulation are the same is, is given by V, uh, subject to these three conditions. So the first, the, D, uh, the Fi triangulation is Delaunay in Di. So Delaunay, uh, which I will say more, it turns out that's a key concept for, for, to, to carry out this uh, uh, research, uh, is given by the conditions that the sum of the two angles facing every edge is at most of pi, so for every edge. So that's a Delaunay condition. I will say more about it as, as underlying geometries of this. And the second, if two adjacent triangulations are not the same, then the metric are the same, uh, are isometric. So, uh, so this is a fancy way of saying what I'm really doing here is, uh, is uh, uh, make a, 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 a flip operation. Okay, so uh, so uh, the triangulation is changed on the line. The triangulation is now changed, but, uh, but the underlying metric is not changing. And the triangulations are all Delaunay, so that's the only possibility. You do some sequence of flips like that. And so, so this is a, a sort of more abstract way of saying that uh, these two metrics are now related by a finite sequence of, of flips. And the last one is the essential part where we actually change the metric. And the, the met metric changing is by uh, vertex scaling. So here is a ve vertex scaling. And so we proved a, 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 a discrete, uh, uh, maybe I'm going to state the theorem one more time. So, so the theorem that we proved is that uh, for any, uh, any PL metric, D only closed surface with a finite set of point, 
and for any, uh, you can prescribe any curvature. Uh, Uh, subject to the Gauss bonnet. Uh, we can find we can find the unique uh, unique PL metric D star on the same surface uh, such that uh, D star is discrete conformal to the given one and its curvature is prescribed. OK, so that's, that's a theorem. I'd like to say a little bit more about it. Um, and uh, I really want to sort of uh, link this to hyperbolic geometries, and, uh, and we'll see. So, uh, so last time, I, I give you this recipe to term. So first, uh, let's go back to this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, definition. There is really a. Uh, some underlying hyperbolic geometry of it. And so here is uh, one way of doing it. Uh, let me just recall that. So, uh, so every triangulated uh, PL uh, surface, metric polyhedral surface. So in this case, I have a surface, a triangulation, and uh, the metric is given by the lens. So L is now uh, a finite set of data. Uh, we can now associate to that a hyperbolic metric L hat uh, on your on the punctured surface. Okay, so we can always do that. And the way to do it, let me just quickly recall because this is going to be uh, addressed, uh, is is very simple. You take every triangle, take any triangle in the triangulation uh, with this metric, and so it's a Euclidean triangle. Uh, we can think of that as isometrically embedded in, uh, into the complex plane, this T. And then every Euclidean triangle is naturally associated to a hyperbolic triangle. Uh, it's, so the Euclidean triangle is a convex hull three points in the plane. And you take the convex hull of the three points uh, in the hyperbolic space we produce a hyperbolic triangle. It's an ideal triangle. So that's uh, so. This is a T star. Uh, uh, by the way, any two uh, this, these are ideal hyperbolic triangle, and any two of them are isometric. And so, 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 so there's no uh, moduli here. So this is. Uh, now, uh, the interesting part is, uh, uh, is if you have two triangles, S and T, uh, in your triangulation, which uh, share a common edge. And so, uh, share, uh, uh, share an edge E. So, suppose we have two triangles uh, glued together isometrically along the edge. And then, uh, I'm going to tell you the recipe to glue these hyperbolic triangles. And so this L hat is just by, uh, by, by keep doing this along every edge, you produce this L hat. And, and it's very simple. Uh, we can now uh, take these two uh, triangles. Uh, we, we have these two triangles sharing one edge. And glue them together gives me a uh, quadrilateral. And quadrilateral can be isometrically embedded into the complex plane as well. So, uh, so you will have a picture like this now. Uh, so T and S. So this is isometric copies of that. And now what I'm going to do is to, uh, to glue these two together. Uh, just by taking over T, you take this, uh, take this uh, ideal one over it. And over S, there is another one over it. And, and that gives you the natural gluing. So, uh, so here is a picture. This is a T star. This is S star. So, so, so now we have a T star glued along S star over the, over the hyperbolic geodesic E star, which is 
the convex hull of the two points. Okay, so, so this is this gives you the gluing uh, the gluing uh, recipe because there are there are really ephemeral gluing, but but the way to glue them now is you just isometrically uh, put them into the Euclidean plane and then uh, take over one of them is T star, over uh, the other one uh, is S star, and they share naturally the same common edge, and that's the way we, we glue these together. And you do that over every edge, and that's this, this uh, L star. Okay, so yesterday I, uh, we, we, we did the calculation and, 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 and show that, uh, so, uh, so we, we proved that uh, if you do a vertex scaling, uh, then the metrics are the same. Okay, so that's the, the, the interesting part. That uh, So for every triangulated surface, polyhedral surface, we can now associate naturally a, this is a, a complete uh, finite area hyperbolic metric. It's a finite area is clear because, uh, because this metric has only finite number of triangles. And each of the ideal hyperbolic triangle has area pi. So it's a finite area. And complete is also quite simple. I am not going to verify it. You just uh, look, at, uh, look at the monodromy along every uh, puncture. It's going to be a cusp. So. So, yeah, it's a curvature minus so one. Is the like so, so is this theorem, uh, if you take k star to be constant, then, then that's a uniformization right. metric. So, so that's a given condition. OK, I give you any metric, and I give you any, any prescribed k star. And then from that, I can produce a polyhedral metric on the surface, uh, which is within the discrete conformal class of D, and its curvature is prescribed. So, so if you take K star to be the constant, uh, yeah, that's a curvature. The, yeah, this is a, the curvature of D is prescribed. Yeah. Okay. So, case if you take K star to be zero or uh, to be constant, then that's a, that's what I call the discrete uniformization. Okay. So, uh, so this is a one way. Uh, this is a way of uh, associating. Uh, 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 every polyhedral surface a hyperbolic metric, and this at the moment depends on t. Depends on t. Um, and now uh, let me just uh, make one observation first. Uh, so, so in on this board there are no Delaunay's whatsoever. It's it's completely general. But if you look at in the case of a Delaunay, what will happen? So, uh, so here is an example. So suppose uh, suppose uh, S and T are two triangles uh, uh, sharing an edge, an edge E, uh, such that uh, the angle alpha plus alpha prime equals pi, uh, uh, where alpha and alpha primes, alpha, alpha prime angles facing E. So uh, if, you, if you again do the same uh, uh, recipe, we, what we will see is uh, uh, I have two. Let me just. So this is my uh, S, and this is my T. And this is the edge E and alpha and alpha prime. OK. So uh, this is uh, the critical moment where we, can, uh, we, we are going to do this. Uh, so uh, suppose uh, we are in a critical uh, moment where, where the sum of the two angles are, uh, uh, is equal to pi. So, so the, the quadrilateral ST is cyclic. Namely, uh, it's inscribed to a circle. So a, a quad is inscribed to the circle even only if the sum of the two angles uh, is equal to pi. And now you do a flip. So, uh, so change the triangulation. Uh, and what I have then is this picture, the same metric, the same quadrilateral, but I change, but I change the, the, the combinatorics. So this is from, say, from T to T, Ti to Ti plus 1. 
uh, is performed along one. Uh, so I have now T1 and S1. Okay. And, and now it's glued along some other edge E1. And we want to see what happened to the associated hyperbolic metric here. And I claim these two are the same. So the claim is um, T star S star E. E star is, uh, in fact, not only it's isometric, but they are, in this case, is really equal. This is isometric. Um, this is not going to be true if, if the sum of the two angles is not equal to pi. It will be uh, these two metric is not the same. And, and, and what is this? This is exactly, uh, both of them are equal to the, the boundary of the convex hull. In the, in the hyperbolic space of the four vertices, V1, V2, V3, V4. So because these four points, four vertices lies in a circle, the convex hull now is a two-dimensional. Okay, so it lies, because it lies in a circle, the convex hull lies in the hyperbolic uh, plane uh, whose boundary is this circle. So, and, uh, and now uh, what you see is this hyper hyperbolic quadrilateral. Okay, so, so this is the same hyperbolic quadrilateral where, so this is what you see is the same uh, ideal hyperbolic quadrilateral but you choose uh, different diagonals. And so that's the only difference between the two, but the metric, underlying metric are the same. So, uh, so this, uh, this construction tells you that uh, if you combine uh, that uh, scaling invariant plus this invariant under flip, it tells you that for, if we are in the category of, uh, of Delaunay triangulation, so the, everything is now invariant. So this implies at least the part of the theorem that, uh, uh, that if, if S uh, D1 uh, L1 and S T2 L2 are two uh, discrete conformal uh, Delaunay triangulated Uh, PL surfaces, PL metrics on the same surface, then uh, then L1 hat is equal to L is isometric to L2 hat. Okay, so uh, we proved the other way around is also true. So in fact, uh, uh, these two are, so uh, one, I, I already give you one proof here, right? Uh, because in the first operation, uh, uh, in the third operation, which is vertex scaling, that's how we construct it to be, uh, using the cross ratio, we see it's invariant. And, and this picture tells you that uh, if you uh, change the combinatorics, uh, without changing the metric, and then it's also the same. And, uh, and, and the other way around is also true. So if this is true, and uh, they, are, uh, they are discrete conformal. Okay, so. <laughs> right, so, uh, so uh, yes. So uh, in, the, in the second step, when you have isometry preserving it, and so what, what happens is in a, in a basic step is you have two triangulations uh, and you do some operation on the triangulation, but both triangulations are Delaunay. And therefore, the sum of the angles has to be pi. Pi or less than Delaunay? Delaunay is supposed to be uh, alpha alpha prime. By definition, should be less than or equal to pi. But only in the case that's equal to pi can you do this switch to produce a Delaunay. So both Delaunay uh, 
implies uh, alpha plus alpha prime equals pi. Because here you have beta and beta prime. So, so, it's, it's, so this second uh, definition is really, uh, you can only do the, the change in this critical moment of Delaunay. And in that moment, the convex hull becomes uh, a two-dimensional, and the metrics are the same. Other than that, it's not true. And so that's how one see, that's, that's one place we see Delaunay comes in, which is uh, here. And it, um, I think I'm not gonna, uh, not gonna prove this uh, here. I will just leave it. Uh, it's a little bit technical. That if, on the other hand, you can show if the two uh, metrics, hyperbolic metrics are isometric, you can prove. Uh, in, in that part, you need to use some uh, Teichmann series. And so basically, we, we have a map from the space of all polyhedra metrics to the space of all hyperbolic metrics on puncture surfaces. And, and this says something about uh, Yes. 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 A sequence of them. OK, can we say a sequence of them? Could, could you say it again? Uh, right. Right. Uh, yes, but, uh, but, but in this recipe, so th those processes are not part of it. And so if you give me a polyhedral surface, which is not Delaunay, I said I can't do it. Okay. So you have to use some other method to turn that into Delaunay first and then start w working on it. OK, so, uh, so that's that. And now uh, let me say a little bit more about the Delaunay, because uh, uh, I like to convince you that uh, this theorem, in the case of, uh, so, so, uh, so the theorem uh, for, uh, for the surface to be the torus uh, and k star to be 0, the theorem, the theorem is, is equivalent to the philosophy. So uh, one can imply one to the other one. This is a really uh, the same statement. I like to convince you that. And in fact, this picture, uh, this picture tells us a way, a suggested way of how to define uh, discrete conformal for non-compact polyhedral surfaces. And so, uh, so that's why. Uh, So let's, let's go back to, uh, to this construction first. Uh, there are no Delaunay conditions whatsoever. So we just uh, take any two triangles which share the same, uh, same edge. We can turn that into a, a hyperbolic quad. And, and now let's ask what happens if it's, it satisfies Delaunay. And, uh, and you will see the convex how appears uh, here. So let me uh, go back to the, to the elementary setup. Let's consider one example. So suppose I, I give you a set of V is a finite set in the complex plane. Um, and we can now talk about, say, uh, a P is a, is a convex hull in the complex plane of the, of the, of the finite set. So, uh, so give you a finite set of points. And you look at the convex hull of that. This, is, by the way, is the most common case appears in, in computer graphics. Uh, and then there is a natural uh, a Delaunay triangulation of P. So there exists uh, a, a Delaunay triangulation. T of, of, the, of the convex hull with a set of point given, uh, so, so the V of T is equal to V. OK. Um, th th by the way, this construction works, in fact, in any Riemannian manifold. Uh, you can, you can, can do, uh, do things like that. Um, uh, maybe let me just jump ahead. And so let me tell you right away, uh, instead of, uh, so the standard way of doing it, maybe I'll, I'll, before I go it, is as follows. So you take a finite set of points in, a, in your plane. And that will produce uh, something called a Folonoi 
uh, uh, decomposition. So uh, you you take uh, this is a phononoid. Uh, for for associate to that, and so what happens is uh, you, you take every take any vertex in your uh, in your set, and that will produce a two dimensional cell for you. So this is R O V is equal to uh, the set of all points in the plane whose distance to V is shorter than the distance to the rest. So Z in in the complex plane. The distance from z to v is less than or equal to the distance from z to v prime for all v prime in v. Okay, so uh, so this uh, given the finite uh, any discrete set in the plane that will produce a natural uh, cell decomposition of it, and so it will be something like. Uh, uh, It's, it's too complicated for me to draw. So, uh, so point here. Oh, so here, here is what I gave a talk it's, uh, to some topologists uh, a few years ago, and they said this is another way to present a talk like that. And so, so the, the best way to say, he said, was uh, you think of this as a garbage, garbage uh, dumping place in the cities, and the Fulinoy cell is the location of the resident, which you drop the, the garbage to the to the site, and so. You always drop the garbage to the nearest side, so this is a this is a phononoid cell, and the dual of that is a, is a is a, so the dual of, of, of the phononoid of it is a, is a Delaunay triangulation. Okay, so so this construction works in any Riemannian matrix, and so it just defines the Riemannian distance and gives you the decomposition. But let me just go ahead and and, and tell you what exactly is here. So. Uh, so what is a triangle? So uh, you have a, a, I give you a triangle, give you three vertices, V, I, V, J, V, K, is a, a triangle in the Fulinoy, in the Delaunay triangulation, uh, if and only if the circum, the circum disk, B of it uh, contains no V, in its interior. Okay, so this is a very simple criteria. Uh, you want to check whether uh, whether uh, whether uh, I give you a triangle uh, like that, and I ask, is this a triangle in the in the uh, Delaunay triangulation? You just check the circum disk. If there are no other vertices inside it, and then that will be a triangle. That will be a valid triangle. And, and from this, you see immediately, this is a geometric description that uh, alpha plus alpha prime conditions, right? So uh, if we have two, if we have a quadrilateral, uh, alpha, alpha prime is less than or equal to pi is exactly the same thing as the circum, the circum disk miss it. And so, so this vertex, the fourth vertex is outside of the circum disk means uh, Alpha plus alpha pi is less than pi. So when, when you move this vertex to the circum circle, it's going to be equal to pi. You move inside, it's going to be bigger than pi. So that's the, that's a, uh, this is a, a very, uh, very nice uh, geometric criterion for, for producing the uh, Delaunay triangulation. But if you think about this, it's really related to the hyperbolic three-dimensional hyperbolic convex hull, because how do we produce the hyperbolic convex hull? So uh, let's recall the, the, the convex hull of V. This is in H3. So I give you a set of points. You can look at the convex hull of these points. Uh, in hyperbolic three-dimensional space, right? You uh, just draw all of these uh, uh, geodesics joining, joining them, and so on. So you see a picture like this. Um, it's, a, it's a hyperbolic uh, polytope. It has faces. And so let's ask, what are the faces? What are the, the two-dimensional faces, the boundary? 
Well, uh, by definition, uh, this is equal to uh, the three-dimensional hyperbolic space remove. So the convex hull is taken by taking uh, by uh, by half spaces or hyperbolic half spaces missing it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna remove all the the balls whose interior is is disjoint from V, and then you take the convex hull of that. So uh, the convex hull V, these are the half spaces, and I remove the interior. Okay, so that's uh, that's the, the sort of the dual uh, picture of the convex hull. And now if you look at this B, this B is a circum disk which, uh, whose interior contains no uh, points in the vertex, and its boundary, you see this boundary, its boundary will be intersect V is at least three points. Uh, so, uh, so what happened is uh, uh, you have this convex hull here, uh, these points here, and now I have this, uh, this, this disk B here, which is a maximum. It cannot be increased anymore. And so what, is, what does this B give you? This B gives you, this, this tells you, this is a maximum, uh, if you look at, the, for a, a convex body, uh, a polytope, it has all of these supporting planes, right? And uh, this condition, uh, interior missing the vertex, boundary contains at least three vertices, tells you that uh, the boundary of, uh, of the convex hull B is a supporting plane. In fact, it's a, it's a two, it's, a, it's not only a supporting plane, but it's a two, uh, produce a two-dimensional face. Okay, um, and so, uh, so we are basically done. So what you see that now is that if we, if we are using a Delaunay triangulation, and you have a T here, and you have the T star, the T star is now this ideal hyperbolic triangle over this T having the same uh, three vertices. This T star appears in the boundary. So the conclusion is uh, T star appears in the boundary of the convex hull. Okay, so, uh, so that's how uh, one relates uh, Philostri's construction to the to the theorem. In other words, uh, uh, in other words, if I if I just keep doing this, if we have a, a if just keep doing this, we see um, we see S star T star. Suppose S and T are S and T are triangles in the Delaunay triangulation are really in the in the boundary. Okay. So as long as you satisfy this uh, maximum ball uh, conditions, it always appears in a boundary. So uh, with that, we can now, uh, let me now just prove the equivalence between the two. Um, So equivalence of philosophy with a, with a torus case. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just imply one direction. The other direction is the same. So suppose I give you uh, I give you a a polyhedron metric. So I give you uh, a given a polyhedra uh, uh, torus. So S1 cross S1 V and some metric D. So I give you this. And from this, I can now uh, produce a D hat. So the polyhedra, uh, you produce, a, you produce a, 
a uh, the Delaunay triangulation and then associate to the triangulation the hyperbolic metric. And so this is a, a hyperbolic metric on the torus minus v. It's a finite uh, area complete. And so by philosophy, I can now embed it into the, into the uh, hyperbolic space. And so, uh, so philosophy will say this d hat is isometric to the boundary of the convex hull uh, of some v prime now. So it's isometric. And now, uh, now what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, is to produce a, a Delaunay triangulation of the conformal infinity. So uh, the claim is that this d star now, uh, this, uh, this d star produced from the Bauer theorem is really isometric to uh, the the conformal infinity marked by the lattice. So really, it should be S1 cross S1, the vertex. And this is uh, V prime. OK, so with a, with a natural uh, flat metric. And so what you do is now uh, from, uh, you form uh, the flat torus with a finite set of point, produce a Delaunay triangulation. Maybe I'm going to put a metric here. So this is, let's call this standard. So this is a flat metric coming from the standard metric in the complex plane marred by the translation. You produce a, 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 a Delaunay triangulation, say T1, of the, of the torus with this finite set of point. And now, uh, now use this construction this construction tells you that, uh, that the D, this D standard hat is isometric to the boundary of the convex hull. So uh, from this conformal infinity, take this finite set of point, we produce a, a Delaunay triangulation, and now you just, just uh, follow this standard procedure. Every triangle in the flat torus, you produce an ideal hyperbolic triangle over it. And uh, because of the Delaunay, these, the ideal triangle that you produced appears exactly in the convex hull boundary. So, so this, uh, this construction is, in some sense, is exactly equal to that. And this is now what, uh, uh, no, I should say hat. Okay, so the, the hyperbolic pieces is equal to that, and this is now isometric by, by the construction to the D, uh, D star hat. Because I produce, a, uh, sorry, the D hat. Okay. So this is how I produce isometric, isometric uh, uh, embedding. And, uh, and this is uh, isometric. And this is by the theorem is the same as D star hat. So uh, we have now two uh, flat metric on the torus, which are discrete conformal, and by the theorem, uh, they are the same. Because the theorem says, if, the, if, if they're discrete conformal, they are the same. So this. OK, so the key uh, to link these two is really through this uh, Delaunay construction and the convex hull uh, procedure. Okay, so, the, so the other way around is the same. And uh, that's how uh, we see the relation between sort of this is a, sort of purely discrete process, the finite steps. Um, and th this is sort of the classical uh, isometric embedding problem. Uh, they are really the same, same thing uh, in, in the setting. OK, so let me now uh, tell you, uh, oh, there is one more thing I should mention that uh, uh, before I go to the. So, so there is also an underlying uh, discrete conformal maps between the two. So this is a map we are going to use to approximate Riemann mapping. So discrete.
if two polyhedral metrics are, are discrete conformal, there is a natural map between the two metric spaces. And so, so this definition does not produce, in fact, it's complicated because of the change of the triangulation. Uh, uh, so uh, whether there is a natural map between the underlying uh, metric surfaces to another one is not clear. Um, but uh, the answer is yes, and it's, uh, it's through this process. So, uh, so, so given, uh, given a triangle, a Euclidean triangle uh, in the complex plane, and, and the associated hyperbolic triangle in the hyperbolic three-dimensional space. Um, so, so this is a picture we, we just uh, saw. This is a T star and T. Um, so, so there is an, an uh, there is a sort of natural way to associate. I just we see natural way to associate a Euclidean triangle, a hyperbolic triangle. But in fact, there is a natural map between the two. It's a vertical projection. So, if you look at the vertical projection, so uh, phi is a, this is this is a homeomorphism. So, this is a vertical projection. Uh, this is a, a very nice map which sends geodesics to geodesics. This is a vertical projection. Uh, it's a homeomorphism uh, send, sending uh, geodesics. Geodesics in, in this uh, upper half space model so exactly the, you take the vertical plane and, and cut it. Uh, so, you take a, a, a geodesic here and you look at the vertical plane, produce one, that will be a geodesic. So, geodesics to geodesics. Okay, so uh, knowing that uh, we can now produce this, this map will really produce a, a map, let's call this pi, from the, uh, from the, the surface now. Uh, Okay, so just glue these pieces together because uh, the way that we glue it, as we, I just mentioned, you just uh, stick around another one and there is another ideal triangle stick to it. And these vertical projections uh, coincide in their common edge. So this will produce a, a homeomorphism between the hyperbolic surface and the Euclidean uh, cone surface. And this, this map is really nice. It's, uh, in, in each interior, in each uh, interior, it sends geodesics to geodesics. It's a really projective map. Uh, and so, uh, so by, by this theorem now, uh, we can now just glue these two together. So, uh, so this uh, discrete conformal map, so let's call this pi, uh, is now the map goes as far. I have too many pi's. Uh, maybe I'm going to call psi. It's just to go uh, like this, psi from S minus V, D1, you go to the hyperbolic pieces, D1 hat, just by taking inverse. And then you go uh, by projection back to itself. So, but this is equal to, so this is isometric to S minus V, D2 hat. So there is a unique isometry between the two. Uh, and then uh, you follow the bide isometry and then go back to the surface. So this is uh, the discrete conformal map. It's a, if you think about it, because uh, these maps send Euclidean lines to hyperbolic geodesics, which is preserved and go back to, to, to Euclidean lines. And so this, uh, this uh, discrete conformal map is a, is a locally projective map. So, uh, it's a homeomorphism, and it's a locally projective map preserving circumcircles. So, uh, so this I is a, it really, it's a piecewise projective map uh, preserving.
Okay, because the circum circle now, you see, the circum circle goes back to the to the conformal infinities here, and it's project back to another triangles. So, uh, so that's a map we will uh, propose to approach the the to, to approximate the, the Riemann mapping. So let me give you the second example of it, and this is the one we are going to uh, address the convergence issue. So suppose I have a uh, polygonal disk. So take a polygonal disk P uh, with a triangulation. And D standard, I'm going to take uh, D standard is always stands for the standard uh, Euclidean. So D standard is a standard. Euclidean metric <coughs> on the complex plane. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use that. So you take any poly polygonal uh, disk in a complex plane and pr produce any triangulations that you want. It's a, it's a geometric triangulation, so the triangles are and uh, let's take three points and take three points P and Q and R in the boundary of P, which also appears in the vertices. So uh, I'm going to mark three points. Uh, now I'm going to apply this theorem that we prescribe the curvature. So, uh, so in theory, I'm going to double it. So this is a, a, a disk and double it, you get a two-sphere. And a two-sphere, I'm going to prescribe as a curvature. So k star is going to be equal to 0 for all vertices other than pqr. Uh, and k star at the pqrs uh, is equal to 2 pi over pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 uh, if v is equal to p and q and r. And so according to the theorem, we can now start doing this discrete process and uh, produce a flat uh, object except at three uh, points. And, and so the, by the end of the day, you, you will get an equilateral triangle. So I'm going to call it ABC to distinguish it. So inside here, you have some triangulations. The triangulation could change, okay? So, but the number of vertices remains the same. So uh, there is this discrete process which we can, we can use Uh, so I really uh, talk about, so, so this theorem only applies to the, to the closed surface. If you have a surface's boundary, and you try to apply it, you have to double the surface and apply it. Okay. So, so we really double it to the two sphere. And then on the two sphere, I prescribe the curvature. At every point, other than PQR, it's zero. At, at that point, at these PQRs is, is, is that. And so, so these two are discrete conformal uh, according to the I'm going to show you the, the computer picture. There we have some software producing. You, you can see some nice pictures uh, tomorrow. Uh, so th these two are discrete conformal. And according to this recipe, there is a discrete conformal map. So there is a, a discrete conformal map between the two. Um, and the claim is that uh, this, uh, this guy is going to converge to the Riemann mapping. So, uh, so that's the counterpart of Thurston's uh, uh, conjecture of circle packing to the Riemann mapping. So let me, let me state the theorem. Uh, this is the theorem. I, I don't have time to prove it, but I'd like to tell you how, uh, how it's uh, the basic idea of the proof. And so the, the basic idea of the proof also produced a new proof of the Rod and Sullivan theorem. So, so I will give you the new proof of the Rod and Sullivan theorem today and indicate how it's, uh, 
it's related to the proof of this. So this is. So suppose uh, I have a Yordan domain. So suppose uh, omega e is a Yordan domain. Uh, in the complex plane, and I have, and I have three points p and q and r in the boundary of omega. And now I uh, just like uh, Thurston, uh, he was trying, to, uh, he was trying to approach this, uh, approximate the region by regular hexagonal uh, circle packing. And now we are approximating this by regular hexagonal triangulation. So you take the regular hexagonal triangulation of side lengths, one over n, for instance. So uh, let's let, let, so let me, let me state it like this. So then, uh, there exists a sequence of uh, polygonal disks, omega n, uh, with a triangulation in the standard uh, Euclidean metric. And also, it has three points, pn, Qn, Rn, because uh, this is, uh, so I have a sequence of polygonal disks uh, where Tn is, uh, uh, is a uh, triangulation uh, by a regular triangle of, of lengths, uh, 1 over n. Um, and, and this omega n approaches omega n, so so omega is going to be com uh, is going to be union of omega n, and omega n is in omega n plus one, and three points. So I have p n. So really, uh, just look at the picture here. We are uh, approximating this guy by by these regular uh, regions. So p n q n are here, very close to the. To the to the given points, uh, Q n. Okay, so uh, P P n converge to P, Q n converge to Q, R n converge to R, and P uh, so P Q R s are in the in the in the boundary of omega n and in the vertices of it. Okay, so that's the length uh, one over P Q. one over n. Uh, of edge lens, this is very small triangles. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, so you can make it. Yeah, um, and and uh, such that the 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 discrete conformal map uh, converge to the Riemann mapping. So, uh, such that the discrete conformal map phi n uh, sending omega n. P n Q n R n, we can normalize it to triangle A B C, just to produce the, in this fashion, converge to the to the Riemann mapping, sending this Jordan domain to the triangle. Okay, so sending, uh, so there is a, a Riemann mapping uh, uh, from the interior to the to the interior of the regular triangle, and and by Caratel Dori extends to the boundary. A homeomorph as a homeomorphism and sending PQRs. So, so this is uh, ABC. Uh, uh, the discrete conformal map converges to the Riemann mapping. For omega. 
PQR to the same. Okay. So, uh, uh, but, but I should, should say that this, this theorem is, in some sense, weaker than Thurston's conjecture. Because at the moment, we can only say we can produce such a sequence. And if you look at Thurston's conjecture, is any, such, any sequence satisfy, uh, satisfies these two conditions in the circle packing case is going to converge. Um, but it turns out, in, in our setting, because we are really uh, uh, approximate uh, the, these uh, univalent functions by prescribing the boundary values, which is a very difficult problem. The Riemann mapping that's used in Thurston's uh, uh, conjecture is, uh, is normalized at the center. Okay, so you don't have to care about uh, the boundaries. And so if we, if we just, uh, you may ask, what if you take any, any sequence, satisfy the condition the Thurston proposed, does it converge? And the answer is no. So it's a, you really need to impose some stronger boundary condition to force the convergence. So, uh, uh, so that's all we have at the moment. And now uh, I th I'm going to I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you what uh, uh, Solomon proved. And so so the proof of this theorem uh, it turns out gives a new proof of the Thurston's Solomon's solution of Thurston's conjecture. And so let me tell you how that goes, and then I'm going to tell you uh, what's uh, what need to be modified. And so let me go back to uh, Thurston's uh, conjecture. Uh, Um, this is a, as a comparison. So you take any, take any uh, bounded, uh, simply connected, domain uh, in the complex plane, uh, and uh, and, uh, approx and also we take a point and we approximate omega m by, uh, by uh, circle packings. So uh, by a circle packing Pn of, uh, uh, of uh, 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 Circles of uh, radii one over n. So I think I'm not going to quantify too much because uh, it's a lot to write. So maybe I'm just uh, going to uh, just draw the pictures. Okay, so we, we stated the conjecture uh, uh, precisely yesterday. So I think I'm just going to just draw the pictures instead of writing too many uh, words. So you give me uh, this bounded simply connected domain. And I'm going to choose one of n, and then uh, we start packing, put a disk radius one of n inside it. These are all regular, and so every, every interior guy is going to tangent to six others. Okay, so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, this circle packing, and we want to make sure that uh, the, the, the underlying triangulation is a triangulation of a disk. So, so, uh, so this is a picture. Okay, so we have that, and now uh, I can now uh, using uh, so by uh, by uh, by curve and drift system, uh, we can produce a a circle packing Q n of the unit disk uh, with the same uh, combinatorics. So uh, so this side we are going to produce a a circle packing of the, of the unit circle. So the boundary, the boundary circles in Pn uh, is going to be uh, circles in Qn tangent to the unit circle. So inside it. So this is the Qn, I think. I also, I have a normalization condition. I think I'm going to skip uh, that. And so you have, you have here, there is a Pn a small disk containing your P, and there is a a Qn here uh, corresponding to it uh, centered at the origin and, and rotations and so on. So let me just uh, skip the details part. And then uh, we produce, uh, uh, let's let F, uh, Fn uh, be the piecewise 
a linear homeomorphism which is defined on some region depends on n. So it, it, it's a, the underlying domain of that is really coming from this triangulated uh, polygons. Okay, so uh, again, I'm uh, not going to specify it. So sending uh, centers of uh, uh, disks in Pn to uh, centers of uh, disks in Qn. So every point, every, uh, every, every circle in Pn corresponds to a unique uh, circles in Qn. And so you have these, these maps defined on the centers of this circle, and then you extend piecewise linearly. Um, and the, the claim is uh, the, 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 the theorem of Rodden Sullivan as can this is a conjectural obsession is that Fn converge to the Riemann mapping. Okay, so let me let me tell you how uh, how how they proved it, um, and um, and also uh, I'll tell you. In fact, our proof is try to follow the 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 the, the Rodden Sullivan's basic strategy. And so let me tell you how, how that's carried out. Well, there are two steps involved in the proof. Uh, the first step is to, to say this, this, these FNs are uniformly quasi-conformal. So, um, <clears throat> so two major steps. So step one, uh, you can find a, a constant k such that uh, Fn are k quasi conformal. So all of these ends have the same uh, quasi conformal upper bound. Um, for, for those who are who, for not, uh, so uh, quasi conformal means if it's a smooth map, uh, you, have a, uh, you have a map from the plane to the plane. Uh, region open set in the plane. It's called k, called k quasi conformal. Let's assume the f is c1 smooth. It's uh, f the following property that uh, you take any point in your domain uh, in the tangent space is going to be uh, a linear map sending, uh, uh, sending the tangent space in at z to the tangent space at f of z and, and it's going to send a circle in the, in the tangent space to an ellipse. Uh, in the tangent, in the target tangent space, so it's called k quasi conformal if the ratio of the major and the minor axis of the two uh, of the of the of the image ellipses is less than k. Okay, so so there is this k which works for all choice of the base point, um, and that's called k quasi conformal. And if k equals 1, that's a conformal map. And so it's going to send a circle to circles. Uh, so the point here is that you have, a, you have the same k works for every point, And that's a k quasi-conformal. And these, there's a really uh, lots of very nice theory which says that a k quasi-conformal uh, behaves like a, a conformal map. It's a normal families and things like that. So that's the first step. And the second step uh, of, uh, of Rod and Solomon's proof says that uh, so k quasi conformal, you can now produce a lot of convergent subsequences. So, uh, so if say phi is a limit, the limit of k quasi conformal is again uh, k quasi conformal, is a is a limit of a subsequence of f and i, uh, f n, uh, then uh, phi is conformal. So any limit of the sequence is going to be one, uh, is conformal, and, and, and that has to be the Riemann mapping because we have this normalization. Okay, so from here to here, uh, there is only one conformal map from the domain to the disk sending Pn to uh, zero, and the derivative is preserved. So, 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 so that will say, uh, 
uh, all limits are the same, and that tells you this uh, conclude Fn converged to the Riemann mapping. Okay, so let me uh, and and these are the two steps we we will uh, we will follow in in the same proof. So so let me tell you how uh, how how Rodden Sullivan proves the first step. The first step is uh, is relatively uh, elementary, and the second step is uh, more uh, 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 complicated. So step one. Uh, To show uh, these FNs, the FNs are these. These are, these are all piecewise linear maps. So, uh, so these FNs now uh, send a regular triangle to uh, some Euclidean triangle, like this. Uh, and and these the image triangles are all built out of these uh, circle packings. So these are all coming out of the circle packings, right? So to prove the, uh, the, the K quasi-conformality, it suffices to show uh, that uh, you can find a, a positive number, delta, such that all triangles are in, in Qn in this triangulation, so the, the circle packing has associated triangulation, uh, uh, have in the angle bigger than or equal to delta. Okay, so there, there will be no skinny triangles in the in in, in the image, and that uh, implies quasi conformality. Okay, so 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 here is how. Uh, uh, Rod and Sullivan proof. The proof is really pretty and uh, and simple. So let me. I'm going to erase this part. Uh, say it again. Yes. Oh, what's the definition? The actual definition. <laughs> um, uh, so <laughs> so it's a first of all, it's a homeomorphism, and uh, uh, so there are several equivalent definitions. Uh, the the one may, which may w work for us is that this is a, a a homeomorphism from open set to open set, which when you restrict it to every line in the plane, it's absolutely continuous, and it has partial derivatives every almost everywhere. Okay, and after that you can now uh, because it has partial derivatives everywhere, and so this condition is satisfied almost everywhere. And that's that's a condition. And so this will take care because this map is not this this map F is not really a smooth map, but uh, for for the quasi-conformal, you only just need uh, absolute continuous on every three lines and derivative almost everywhere defined. Okay, a good question. Okay, so uh, so this is the part that uh, uh, they prove. And so let me let me tell you how they proved it. It's uh, it's really a very pretty. Uh, geometric argument. It's called uh, the the ring lemma. By the way, this, I, uh, if you are really interested, in it, it's the, the paper by Rod and Solomon is really beautiful. It's definitely worth reading it. Uh, it's a very uh, inspirational paper. So so here is a a, a ring lemma by. By Rodden and Sullivan, which will imply this lower bound on uh, angle condition, it says as follows. So, uh, so, so let me just draw a picture first. So you take the the unit disk. Maybe I'm going to call it d zero. You take the unit disk in the in the complex plane, and suppose uh, you have six other disks tangent to it. It's forming a flower. Okay. Oh, I just draw too big. So, the, so these are the basic ingredients that you see here, right? If your circle is uh, 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 is a if the circle is the interior, there will be six uh, uh, six circles tangent to it. And so, suppose I have d one, d six uh, disks. 
this disjoint are interior and tangent to to the unit disk uh, such that di is tangent to di plus 1 so uh, d7 is good. So just like this, what I draw, I just draw too big here. So it's a D1, D2, D3, and so on. And then, uh, then uh, the radius Ri of Di cannot be too small. OK, you cannot have six circles tangent to a circle radius 1. And, uh, and one of the circles has a very small radius. And uh, by the way, if you have that, uh, if you have this, it's, it really says that the ratio of two adjacent radii is, uh, is not too large. So one, and, and that implies this immediately, because uh, uh, if you have a, a, a Euclidean triangle built out of uh, uh, three uh, pairwise tangent uh, circles, where the ratio of two uh, radii is bounded, and then, uh, and then none of the angle can be uh, too small. And the proof is, again, uh, really simple. So let me just prove it. Uh, so, if, 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 so proof. Uh, at least, uh, first of all, uh, one of Ri has to be at least one. So, uh, so you have six uh, disks surround a disk of radius 1. And, and one of them has to have a radius at least 1, because if they are all smaller than 1, then they cannot. So this is a picture in, uh, in the complex plane. Uh, if, if all of them are smaller than, than 1, then, then these angles is less than 60 degree. And it cannot add up a, a 2 pi as a center. So I'll say. Uh, say R1 equals 1. So the first uh, circle has radius equal to 1. And now let's see. Yeah, OK, I see. OK, well, why don't I draw it here? So, uh, so I have, uh, I have uh, uh, radius 1 here, and I have another circle, which is a uh, circle. The radius is relatively large. It's at least 1. This is D1. And now knowing that I claim D2, this implies D2 cannot be too small. Uh, uh, so what happens is if D2 is really small, so D2 is here, D2 is going to tangent to D0 and D1 by definition. If D2 is small, then D3 is small as well. This implies. Uh, So maybe I should draw a picture like D2 is really, really tiny, small here. And where is D3? D3 is tangent to D0, D1, and it's disjoint from, so disjoint from D1, right? And so there's no way you can put a big circle here. And so D3 is going to be small. So if D3 is too large and it's tangent to D0 and D1, then D3 is going to intersect D1. And now you just repeat, and so you're done. So, this so that's, uh, that's uh, the easy part. And, and uh, in our case, we also have the similar uh, estimate. Okay, so, uh, so there is a, instead of these are the radii uh, estimate, uh, we have the, the, now the length is coming from the multiplication factors, the conformal factors. It's again a uh, uh, very simple. Uh, uh, the ge geometric argument, the elementary argument, like this. So that, that will take care of the uh, k quasi conformal part. And now, because it's k quasi conformal, you can always produce some convergent subsequences, which is again uh, k quasi conformal. So, so that's the compactness part, which is guaranteed. And, and uh, let's now try to prove the limit is, uh, the limit is, uh, is conformal. So uh, that. Maybe let me let me just use the other board.
so uh, if phi is a limit is a of a subsequence of these uh, piecewise linear maps, um, and we want to show this is a, a conformal map, um, and uh, and and phi conformal uh, follows from from this theorem. Uh, uh, so let me. It's uh, really the rigidity of, of the hexagonal circle packing. So. Uh, And so, so this part is uh, the, the proof is non-elementary. So let me uh, jump ahead and tell you the statement, and then uh, you can you can basically think about it. Because uh, what are these maps? These are maps which take the regular hexagonal circle packing to some circle packings in the plane, and we are now shrinking the radii of the circle packings in one hand, and in the image will produce the circle packing of the domain, and you shrink it in the limit. So this guy is, in some sense, taking a circle packing, in taking, do some rescaling, and take a limit. Uh, in the tangent level, this map is going to take the regular hexagonal triangulation of the plane to some hexagonal triangulation of the plane. And uh, to be conformal, you have to show uh, that's the unique one. And so, so suppose, uh, suppose I have the complex plane, T standard. This is a uh, Standard uh, hexagonal triangulation that we that we discussed in the first lecture for Doyle's example, and I have a and I have a radius assignment, and so this is a a circle packing. V is a standard, which is uh, the standard hexagonal uh, lattice. So suppose I have a, this is a hexagonal circle packing, it is a flat circle packing on the complex plane. Okay, so, so think of this as the one coming from the limit of the, of the target circle packing after rescaling. Um, and we know from uh, Doyle's example that, uh, that uh, we cannot expect right away that this I is a constant, which is a standard regular hexagonal uh, circle packing. Uh, now he assumes that we need to assume something, and the the flat metric is isometric to an open set in the complex plane. So uh, in terms of the uh, this is really it's a flat surface. It's simply connected to flat surface. It has a developer map. So this is a condition says that the developer map is a is an injective isometric embedding uh, embedding into it, and then um, then uh, so there's only one. Okay. So uh, in terms of the picture, so the Doyle's picture, which I'm going to show you tomorrow, you see it's it's a, it's a spiraling. It's it's really uh, a lots of immersions. It's, it cannot be embedded into into the complex plane, and this theorem says that. If you have a, 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 a circle packing which is, regu which is uh, hexagonal, and you try to fill it in the complex plane, uh, suppose some open region is just uh, filled by this uh, hexagonal uh, circle packing of the complex plane, uh, some open set of it. And then the only way you can do it is all of them have the same, uh, same size. And this, uh, I think I'm going to. Uh, skips the details, and so this theorem implies uh, uh, with uh, very little work, phi is conformal. Because uh, this, uh, you, you can take this image uh, uh, circle packing coming from the limit of the, the image, and then uh, the, this rigidity says, says that uh, it has to be the, the, the regular one, okay, which will, will say uh, in, the, in the tangent space level, this map is a is a, is a linear map sending the regular hexagonal triangulation to the regular hexagonal triangulation, so it's a conformal. Okay, so, uh, so in, in our case, we, so, so this is one of the key steps in the proof. 
uh, we prove the similar theorems. And so let me state uh, uh, our case before I prove it. Uh, it says the following. So suppose, uh, so let's let, it's the same setup. Let's let L standard to be the constant map. So, so if you, you take every edge to be your length one, that's a regular hexagonal triangulation. And, um, and I have uh, a vertex scaled. So take the standard one, do a vertex scaling. So W is now uh, uh, a map from the vertices to R. We scale it. And this guy is is a flat Delaunay triangulation isometric to an open set in the complex plane. Um, then uh, this W has to be constant. Then uh, W is a constant. So that's the only way you can do. Uh, Yeah, yeah, that fails this condition. It's not isometric to uh, open set. It's when you try to isometrically embed it into the complex plane, you can never achieve. It always has a lot of self intersections. Okay. And and so is here. So so uh, this condition is needed because we also have the the similar spiral situation in, in our case. Okay. So, so I have 10 minutes, and let's see whether I can prove the theorem in 10 minutes. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I need, a, I need a 30 minutes. So let, let me try. <laughs> let me try. Maybe I'll continue that tomorrow. And so the proof is, is, um, is uh, so, the, so the, the proof, this proof is ours. It's, it's, uh, we think of this as a, uh, as sort of alluvial type of problem. So this r is a function defined on the lattices. Uh, this flat condition was roughly says that uh, this r is a, is a discrete harmonic function. Um, and, uh, and this condition that is isometric to open set in a complex plane in some senses translates into a bounded. It's a bounded discrete harmonic function in the complex plane. It has to be a constant. And so that's, uh, that's a basic idea uh, of it. Um, uh, so, so I, let's see whether I should do this or because it's gonna tomorrow I need to repeat. Uh, so maybe maybe let's uh, let, let, let me let me skip this, but let me just mention because I have a few more minutes. Uh, one of the, the key tools used here in, in these proofs is the maximum principle, which I think is probably more interesting. So let me just uh, mention the, the maximum principle uh, of, of Thurston. And we have a similar maximum principle. I like to mention that. And so uh, as we know, uh, the maximum principle is the basic property of the, of the harmonic functions and the discrete one. So uh, I, I mentioned last time, uh, so, so maybe let me just draw, let me just draw the pictures. Uh, uh, in a circle packing case, you have a circle and a flower of circles. Suppose we have this picture, okay? So you have a central circle and the rest of it surround it. Uh, suppose this is a flat, uh, it's, it has a zero curvature in the center. So this is V0, this is VI. Uh, and so I, RI is equal to the radii. Um, and, and, and so initially you have this picture. And, and then uh, Thurston's maximum principle says that if we increase the radius in the center and decrease the radii surround it, 
then you are going to destroy the flatness. So if it's flat, there's no way you can increase the center radii and decrease the, uh, the radii outside. And, and that because, is because of this picture that we, that we saw, right? So if you increase this radius and fix this too, uh, this, this is the insistence nodes, right? So if you increase this radius, uh, this angle is going to be decreased by this fact. And now you, if you decrease this, uh, this uh, radius, and this is going to keep increasing it. Because, uh, because if you increase this guy, these angles are going to be increasing. And so that's uh, Sesson's maximum principle. And in our case, uh, we have the following picture, uh, which, which is a little bit more complicated because uh, this uh, really in Cohen Dira DA's uh, picture is uh, partial partial ui is less than zero and partial theta i partial uj is positive. Okay, so you have a you have a a strict control of the of the of the sign of it. But in the in the vertex scaling case, it's not because of the cotangent. So uh, so in in the same picture now uh, instead of Taking the radii now, suppose we take the, the vertex scaling uh, picture. So it's no longer the radius, but you think of this, uh, this as a multiplication. So the lens here is a multiplication. Um, I claim you still have the same phenomenon. This is still true. Um, if, if you have a flat picture here, where the radii, uh, the, the lens are coming from the multiplication of the conformal factors at the center. And now you increase the conformal factor in the center and decrease the conformal factor in the boundary, then you're going to destroy the, the curvature. So, uh, so let me recall that in, in our case, what we have is partial theta i, partial ui is going to be negative, but partial theta i, partial uj is equal to cotangent theta k. Okay, so you cannot, we cannot control the sign of this. this uh, we cannot control the sign of this, this guy. So, so this is uh, uh, i, j, k, and here is theta k. Uh, and now, uh, now let's, uh, let's see. Good, I have two minutes, I can prove it. So uh, first of all, if we, if we leave all the conformal factors in a boundary fixed, and let's increase this conformal factor in the, in the center, and that will take care of it. So, so that will, uh, uh, you increase the conformal factor, you, you're going to decrease the angles, and that will destroy it. So, so the real problem is, what if I, if I say decrease the conformal factor in a boundary vertex, and let's see what is its effect on this uh, curvature in the center. Well, well, this formula tells you if you increase the conformal factor here, the contribution comes from the two angles facing it. The contribution will be cotangent alpha plus cotangent alpha prime. That's the rate of change of the curvature in the center. And uh, what is that? This is equal to sine alpha plus alpha prime over sine alpha sine alpha prime. And now, uh, because we have uh, and Delaunay, it tells you alpha plus alpha prime is less than pi, and so it's always positive. OK, so it's really not the individual triangle which controls the sign, but the Delaunay condition, which is really essential here, controls the, the variation of the curvature, and that produces a maximum principle. Okay, so I'll stop here. <laughs>